Hey guys, back on another YouTube video. Today it's going to be a showing off video. Now I got some items from the pawn shops, and I got some new items that I made, and I got an update item, and I'm going to re-show some of the stuff JJ Jinx got me because I noticed in the previous video the lighting was a very was a little bit off because I had to do that outside because it was raining, and normally I hate doing stuff inside because of that reason, but luckily it's a nice day today, and... So I'm going to show off all the stuff that he got gave me so y'all can get a better look at what all he got for me. But I'll show those last. First thing I'll show off is the stuff that I got from the pawn shops. First is this very nice Imperial in Ireland Electrician's Barlow. Hardly had any use. It's in really great shape and still razor sharp. Paid $8 for this. That was a heck of a good score. And then right next to it was this Imperial Ireland knife. I don't think this will be considered a hawk bill. I think this will just be called a sheep's foot blade. But again, it's brand new. doesn't even look like it's been sharpened. And it's in great condition. And it opens and closes without a problem. That one was, a let, was $10. So that was a good score. And then I also picked up this giant Nicholson file at a pawn shop for two bucks. The lady who runs it knows I make knives, so she gave me a good deal on this so I can make some knives out of it. And this next item, I know those who know my channel know I have a very love-hate relationship with China. And for obvious reasons, they make a lot of crap, junk, and... But this particular item is made by a good brand that I do vaguely know about, and... When I saw the design of this, I fell in love with it. We were at Atwoods, and I saw this in their display with the Kershaw's. The Kershaw Clipster. And I fell in love with it, because those who know me know my favorite, one of my favorite designs is a Barlow. And this one has Granddaddy Barlow style written all over it, and I love the lanyard hole. It has G10 handles, brass liners, and nice steel bolsters like a lot of Barlow's have and it's a modern slip joint you don't really see those too often and it was only $21 and some, some tax but I like the design and I'm gonna actually use this try it out see what I think about it and most likely what I'll do is if I don't like the blade material I'll probably take the blade material out and put a US blade in it but either way it's gonna get some use so I still think I love the design. It is one of my favorite designs. All right. Those are all my items I picked up. Well, this one didn't come from a pawn shop. This one came from Atwoods, but that's a different story. Anyway, uh, next is showing off a few new ones that I, uh, an update on one and one that I built. Those who may know in a previous video, I bought a lot of knives for 25 bucks. And this was that broken K-bar blade. Now, the blade originally did not have a tang of any kind. When I took it out of the stag handle, it was just a little nub of a tang. And I did something i never done before. I took a square piece of metal from an old screwdriver and cut a slot in it for what was left of the tang. And then pinned it together very tightly and then just made a new tang. And then I just put a nice red and brown leather handle with a brass pommel and aluminum guard. And then I went to work on the blade to preserve it. This is a K bar 1207 USA. And I'm very happy I was able to bring this knife back to life. This particular one I'm going to keep in my collection. I don't have many K bars. And to be honest, I wouldn't even know what to ask for it. But this particular one is going to stay in my collection because I love it way too much. And then I also made this knife real quick. Made this one out of three different pieces of stag with a pin holding it all together. A file for the blade, a nice piece of aluminum for the guard, and it's a stick tang. Again, I love using stag, those who know me. Alright, uh, next is re-showing the knives that I got from Edward and a couple of other items. And then one special item I did some modifications to. First item I'll re-show is this Denix 1911 that my friend Edward got, JJ Jinx got for me. And I finally was able to get the orange cap out of it. And now it looks even more realistic. Man, that's nice. And this one is meant to replicate the M1911A1, the first one of the first ones that were issued to the U.S. military. And it's beautiful. Sadly, it doesn't have a detachable magazine, and none of the safety parts move. 
but I'm still happy with it regardless because I do love this style of gun. It's one of my favorites. And I do plan on someday getting the Denix version that has the detached magazine and all the parts work because they do sell that version too. This is just a display version. Still a beautiful piece though. You can't deny that. And how realistic it looks. Beautiful. And then of course the clock that was one of my favorites. This is actually on my shelf all the time and my father set it for me because these kind of clocks I'm not really that experienced with and he was able to set it for me. And then this one was is one of my all-time favorites. This is the Kissing Cranes Damascus Knife. And this one stays in my safe. I don't get rid of it. I mean, I don't play with it too much unless it's to show it off. And check that beauty out. Sadly, it doesn't have real pearl handles like I thought it did. I looked up this knife on Bud K. And still, though, I love the design. It's very beautiful. And you just can't deny that. That's just so nice. Thank you again, Edward. This one is one of my favorites, and I love the file work. That back in the bag. And then back in the box, and then it'll go back in my safe later. Okay. Uh, next is... Oh, yeah, this little self-defense tool that I got in that package. This is meant to be like a little baton you can use to smash a window with or to <laughs> hit somebody with if you need to. But I don't ever plan on using this. This will probably just stay in my collection as one of my weird items. But, okay, next is, ah, this folding knife. Again, one of my favorites because I love the G10 handles. Beautiful, and I love that design. Check that out. Can't beat a classic. And this one, I'm actually going to use some designs off of this handle design. I'm actually going to make a couple of fixed blades modeled after it. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, ah, another item is this lighter that I mistakenly called a Zippo. It's, it's made in China. But it's a nice one, too. I love that steampunk style. Thank you very much, JJ Jinx. Again, I love all this stuff. And then, of course, last but not least, is the trench knives that I did some things to. One of them I haven't modified. So here's what, it, here's what they looked like when I first got them. It's a standard replica. And... Again, I showed off in the video what the tangs look like. It's basically just a rat tail tang welded to this. And obviously, if you were to do some serious damage, it would most likely break. And obviously, I didn't want that. So what I did is I took one and did some slight modifications to it. As you can see, what I did is I took an old Nicholson file and made a nice double-edged blade. And it is very sharp, too. And then I blued the blade because originally these blades were never polished. They were, had a black finish. And then I also blued the palm a little bit. And now it looks like it's ready to go back into service. And nice. I always wanted to do one of these projects for a long time. And I never wanted to do it to a real one. And I figured doing it to a replica, I'm happy with that. And I'm still debating rather not what to do for this one next. But still, it goes to show with a little bit of time and a little bit of work, you can really make something into truly badass. Really going to show how vicious this weapon was during the trenches. Beautiful. And then what I did with the old blade that was in this, is those who may remember, the blades look just like this. Didn't want to waste the material, so I shortened the blade, made it a small tang, and turned it into this nice little stag knife. Put a nice hole right through the tang and just simply pinned it all together. Beautiful, and it came out really well. This one will be put for sale as well. But like I said, nothing ever goes to waste. Unless it's Pakistan steel, then I just throw it away. Uh, okay. That's all the stuff I've got to show. Thank you very much again, JJ Jinx, for all this stuff. And I love how the trench knife turned out. I look forward to doing the next project on this one. I still don't know what design to try yet. 
and I love the pistol in general. That one's definitely one of my favorites. And I'll be doing an update video about this sometime. And showing, I'll do the same thing like I did with that other knife I bought. And I'll wait about a couple of weeks to do a review on this. Because by that time I will have used it and seen how good of a quality it is. The main thing I want to know is how good the slip joint is. Because those who know slip joints are always very smooth as long as you oil them properly. And... Like I said, I look forward to using this, and I will do a review on it in a couple of days. But these are going to look so good in my collection because I love collecting these. And then this is going to make a nice, beautiful knife. So I guess I'll end the video right here. Hope you've enjoyed, and as always, stay sharp.